I'm going to begin by telling you about Miss Frost. While I say to everyone that I became a writer because I read a certain novel by Charles Dickens at the formative age of 15, the truth is I was younger than that when I first met Miss Frost and imagined having sex with her. And this moment of my sexual awakening also marked the fitful birth of my imagination. We are formed by what we desire. In less than a minute of excited, secretive longing, I desired to become a writer and to have sex with Miss Frost, not necessarily in that order. I met Miss Frost in a library. This was the public library in the small town of First Sister, Vermont, a compact red brick building on the same street where my grandmother and grandfather lived. I grew up in their house on River Street until I was 15, when my mom remarried. My mother met my stepfather in a play. The town's amateur theatrical society was called the First Sister Players, for as far back as I can remember, I saw all the plays in our town's little theater. My mom was the prompter. If you forgot your lines, she told you what to say. It being an amateur theater, there were a lot of forgotten lines. For years, I thought the prompter was one of the actors, someone mysteriously off stage and not in costume, but a necessary contributor to the dialogue. My stepfather was a new actor in the First Sister Players when my mother met him. He had come to town to teach at Favorite River Academy, the almost prestigious private school, which was then all boys. For much of my young life, most certainly by the time I was 10 or 11, I must have known that eventually, when I was old enough, I would go to the academy. There was a more modern and better lit library at the prep school, but the public library in the town of First Sister was my first library, and the librarian there was my first librarian. Needless to say, Miss Frost was a more memorable experience than the library. Inexcusably, it was long after meeting her that I learned the librarian's first name. Everyone called her Miss Frost, and she seemed to me to be my mum's age or a little younger when I belatedly got my first library card and met her. My aunt had told me that Miss Frost used to be very good-looking, but it was impossible for me to imagine that Miss Frost could ever have been better looking than she was when I met her, notwithstanding that even as a kid all I did was imagine things. My aunt claimed that the available men in the town used to fall all over themselves when they met Miss Frost. When one of them got up the nerve to introduce himself, to actually tell Miss Frost his name, the once beautiful librarian would look at him coldly and she would icily say, My name is Miss Frost, never been married, never want to be. With that attitude, Miss Frost was still unmarried when I met her. Inconceivably to me, the available men in the town of First Sister had long stopped introducing themselves to her.